And can Kyle Larson continue on the hot streak that he has been on in this series? Larson, William Byron, two Chevrolets making up row one as we get ready for the first race of the doubleheader weekend. Green flag in the air. Larson, a great push down the front straightaway into turn one and two. Both those guys are going to clear Byron, who fell back to third position. You heard Kevin Harvick talk about having more grit. Ross Chastain trying to make a move. Going into the tunnel turn. It's tight through here side by side. Truck Series ran here earlier today, so they have worked in that outside groove of that second groove. The PJ1 will be a great option for these guys. You saw Larson. Choose the outside for the control. But Byron also has the wall to sort of box that driver in if it's not a teammate. Oh, we got a big crash back here on the front straightaway. Cole Custer in the 41. He's got a lot of damage to the front. It looks like a situation where either he got clipped in the left rear and turned in the wall. Don't see any damage on the right rear quarter panel to think that he might have got turned from that angle with a car on his outside. But it looks like somebody or somehow this 41 got steered into the fence. I was watching that battle. He was back there amongst the cars that had pitted. Custer had not pitted. He was on old tires, but Chastain, Kazalowski, Matty D, Blaney, they were all kind of around him, Junior, on newer tires. I don't know if that's the momentum. That was that push you're talking about. We'll have to see as we see Custer climb out. Had issues last week at Nashville with the brakes. Decent speed at that race, but another poor finish today for Cole. You can see him shaking his head, disappointed. AMR safety team immediately out there for Cole. But a lot of damage and a short day for him. And remember, guys, it's back up for tomorrow. So here you go. See if we can figure out what happened. Oh, he tried to maybe squeeze in here. And oh, no. Brad. So Brad, he was going to go. I think Brad thought that Cole was coming up the racetrack in front of him. And Brad said, you know what? I'm going to dive to the inside. Well, Cole didn't come as far up as Brad had anticipated and they came together. Brad sent him into the wall, and so Cole Custer's day is over. We'll see if there's some damage to the front end of the two car. Brad's got such a big run. He's like, I can't lift here. I've got too big a run on this guy. He's coming up in front of me to get to the outside line. He thought he was right here. He thought he's coming up to the block, but watch, he stops. He doesn't come. Brad then says, I'm going to try to cross you over, get underneath you, misjudges it. It just plants Cole into the wall. Yep. Nothing Cole did there. I think Brad just didn't under, didn't realize what Cole was going to do. Let's listen to Brad and see what he says. 41 was trying to come up as I was turning down. He fine. You know, a stage win doesn't seem like much, but Junior, great shot in the arm, right? If you've been getting beat on raw speed and now you come to a speed racetrack, Kyle Busch wins the first stage. Third stage win of the season for Kyle Busch. So maybe things turning around when he's... Yeah, they made minimum... Oh, oh and a big crash. accident. Corey LaJoy involved in the seven. Classic, classic, classic. It's like Corey LaJoy, the 38. Anthony Alfredo has damage as well. A lot of damage on the right rear of this seven. I'm not right, sure. Get it going here. Get it going. If it was a oh, flat desire of contact. Ah, uh, they were 16th last week. Four weeks in a row inside the top 20 for Corey LaJoy. Been doing a really good job. Overachieving, in my opinion. Nice work by Corey, but today... Yeah, I look at this team and think, man, 25th is a great day for this seven car coming into the season. They have really improved and built this program up to where Corey... Takes this car and runs in the top 20 with it. Not going to happen today, but they get to go to the garage and rebound. Come back tomorrow and try to try to get in that top 20 again. And Steve, this is a bigger hit for a small team like that, having to go to a backup car versus these other teams we've seen. They're larger teams, more finances. This affects this team more. Let's we'll see how this happened off the of turn four. Oh, Corey a little bit high. Sends the 38 car. Anthony into the outside wall. Anthony didn't do anything wrong there. I mean, he got run into the fence. Pretty much up along the outside of that seven car. I don't know if Corey didn't know he was there or whatever, but 
before he takes the line away. Maybe they got together coming off the corner, and Corey's trying to turn left, but it's steering him right as those cars are heading off the corner. Yeah, we've seen this car run really well over the last couple of weeks coming through the tunnel, though. He got up out of the groove, hard into the wall, really, really bad contact with the right rear pancake, the right side of this car, then coming to pit road. Almost spins the car around. Had some great momentum, great speed. They were losing time, though, to the cars in front of them. They had been running right there behind Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman. And then there was, you know, something happened that created this large gap. And I think the, the handle might have been going away on this 42 car. Possibly going to lose more spots that way. Kurt Busch, think about all his points he gained last week, trying to make the playoffs, now in position to win this stage, Rick. A playoff point on the line, and again, more points for Kurt Busch. But Kyle Larson with that last run, still going to hold on to second. It's Kurt Busch, Kyle Larson, Logano, Byron, and Blaney. Look at that run he gets in the middle of three. That's the breeze. Caution is out for the breeze. the tunnel. And so now it'll come down to a restart. Well... First, it comes down to who's going to pit and who's who isn't. That, okay, when you say debris, that's some debris right there. Yes. That's a big old piece. I'm telling you, these last few laps. You're up to see him. Car. He's working in here. He's way down there. He's way down there. You're going to have to call it. Making him think. Oh, he's right on him. He's going to take the air away. No, he loses the air. Jumps to the throttle. Still all good. All big good. run here. Keep coming up here. Goodbye. Have to actually work out to the bottom. Just inside. Now Bowman's just got him. Just keep him next to him. Can he stay on the outside through the still tunnel there, turn? Your quarter inside. They side draft. He tries to pull it back. Larson, he gets in front of him. Larson out front again at Pocono. What a great battle. Four consecutive wins is what Larson's fighting for. Eric Jones and Bush are battling for 20th place on the racetrack right now. Bush are in 21st. Or Jones now in 21st. Bush has made the pass. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Two and a half miles in front of Kyle Larson, and what a historic day it will be for him. They've all come differently. He's dominated some. Road courses, high horsepower, low horsepower, different style racetrack. This racetrack, unlike any other, and he had to go get the lead back in the closing laps. Kyle Larson trying to join the legends of NASCAR. Only eight before him have ever won four. Oh, he's got a flat tire. The left front tire's flat. It's down. He's going to go into the wall. Kyle Larson in the wall. The 48 of Bowman's going to get by him. A flat tire for Kyle Larson. And now Alex Bowman is going to win at Pocono. Unbelievable. as though he had a turn to go to get into the history books and it was a flat tire right there. that ended it, it. Bring it back Larson was still able me. to finish this race in ninth but it was Alex Bowman the battle that he put on with Kyle Larson to be up there and challenge for the win and he gets it Breaker. You know, it reminds me of your dad You're driving into turn three at Daytona, coming to win the Daytona 500. Tire goes down, looks like he has it in hand. Yeah. Right. These races were never over until they drop the checkered flag. Just never know what can happen. So many moving parts and pieces. And hey, give Alex Bowman credit. You said it, Steve. He sat there and fought and fought and fought, took the inside lane, made positions up, caught a lucky break, but put himself in position in case something happened, he could win this race. You gotta give 
clearly he got a lucky break, but he put himself in position to let that happen. He's probably still catching his breath saying, what just happened? This checkered flag moment brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Remember, it was back in 2015 at 22 years old, Bowman said, the reality of it is I'm probably never going to get a call from Hendrick Motorsports to drive for them. Well, guess what? He did. He just signed his longest deal of his career. And now he's won at Pocono, keeping the Hendrick streak alive at six wins in a row. For more great NASCAR on Fox content, subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere right around here.